what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over here into Visual Studio Code and just show that I am sitting inside of an empty folder right now. And what I'm going to do is show you just how quickly you can start to add some of this functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Dapper, I mean, a .NET new web API. So what I'm creating is a brand new out of the box, hello world type of application. And what's really cool is you can dapperize an application without changing a single line of code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run this application, but I'm gonna use Dapper to run it. So I'm saying, hey Dapper, run an app and name it my app. I want you to run it on port 5000, and I want you as Dapper to be running on port 3500, which you'll notice matches some of the URLs that Mark was showing you in the slides. What's really cool about this is my app starts up, as you can see down here at the bottom, and I get logging not only from my app, as you can see here at the top where it says app, but also down here I'm getting detailed logging from actual Dapper itself. If I jump back over to my web browser, I'm gonna come here and this URL says localhost 5000, which is the port that you would normally access this website on. So if you already had an existing web service, all your existing clients will continue to work because the original URL is still exposed and accessible if you need to. But the power comes in when you use this tab. Here, I'm actually targeting localhost 3500. This is saying, hey Dapper, I want you to go do something for me. I don't know the port of this other application. I don't know where it exists on our network. I don't even know how many instances of that other application there are, but I know the name of it is my app. And I want you to go invoke a method on it called weather forecast. So when I click on this, what happens is I get the exact same results. I'm still getting the exact same information I was getting before, but now this URL is portable. I can use this URL throughout my application. I can completely change the other service, the ports, the number of instances where it's located, but my application does not have to change. I local, I port, I address localhost 3500, go call this particular app for me, and magic starts to happen. So this is great service to service invocation handled for you automatically by just knowing the name of the service that you want to call. More stuff is happening in the background. As Mark mentioned a second ago, Zipkin is also running. And if I run a query here, we can see just a few seconds ago, I made a call. You would not get this out of the box when you just do a .NET new. To get this information, all I had to do is say, hey Dapper, I want you to run my application and monitor it for me and let me know every single time something gets called. And not only that, it lets me know how long that actual call took, what the status of that call was, uh, and this information here, I can start to use to diagnose, maybe I have a bottleneck somewhere in my application. And I didn't have to add any code. I didn't have to write any telemetry. I didn't have to take the dependency on a library. I simply said, hey, Dapper, go run my app for me. And while you're doing that, collect all this great observability information for me and also handle service to service invocation. So with just a running the app that I have not changed at all, I'm already starting to be able to use some of those building blocks that Mark showed you a moment ago. I was able to use observability, which I'll show you here, and I was able to use service to service invocation by not changing the app at all. So what I wanna do now is I wanna turn it back over to Mark and let Mark show you some of the other building blocks, and then I'll show you how easily we can add those building blocks to this Hello World application. 